Last time, we were continuing our investigations on life sciences, and we were looking at the covering of an animal in our life science unit. And we learned that their fur, their hair, and even their fat really helps them stay warm and adapt to the conditions that they are living in. Today, we're going to investigate more life sciences and we're gonna investigate bird beaks. I have some pictures of bird beaks behind me, but I'll show you up close. Now, I wanna ask you, do all bird beaks look the same? Do they all have the same function? Let's look and see. Looking at those beaks, they all look different, right? Why do you think they look different? What's the function of the beak? Is there a function? Could it be to get their food? Maybe to help them carry things? Maybe to help them move things around? We're gonna do a lab that's going to help us understand purpose of their beak structure a little bit better. You're going to supply, for this lab, you're going to need to supply water, some cooked spaghetti noodles, and from your enrichment bag, you're going to reach in and you're going to get a container of Swedish fish, tweezers, you have a packet of seeds. You also have chopsticks and a chopstick help. You're also going to need the spoon inside of your enrichment. Again, here are the materials that you're going to need. And the next thing you're going to do is remove your chopsticks from their packet. Remove the chopstick helper from the plastic container and you can attach the chopsticks to the chopstick helper. And you should be able to use them like so. Now you only have one of these containers supplied to you. If you have more at home, go ahead and use them. If not, you can reuse the same one a few different times. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a modeling activity. In one container, I have the Swedish fish, which is going to represent fish. In the next container, I'm going to open up my packet of sunflower seeds and empty them in there. And in my Last container, I'm going to put some of my noodles, which is going to represent worms. Each of these three containers represents a different type of food that birds could eat. Birds eat seeds, birds eat fish, and birds eat worms. Now again, we don't have real fish and we don't have real worms, but spaghetti acts and behaves similar to worms. The seeds are regular seeds and the fish 
We'll also model fish. Now I'm going to take some water and pour a little bit of water into the container with my fish and pour a little bit of water into my container of worms. Now I have three different tools that are going to model different types of beaks. Chopstick, tweezer, and a spoon. Now one by one, I'm going to use each of my tools to see which is best for which type of food. Now before you do this lab, it's a good idea to pause this video and make a prediction. Which tool do you think is best for picking up the worms? Which tool do you think is best for picking up the seeds and cracking them open? And which tool do you think is best for picking up the fish? Now remember, you wanna pick up the most and be able to hold on to it. And in the case of the seeds, you have to crack them open. Now let's try the tweezers for the worms. Oh, not bad. I was able to get some in here. I'm gonna transfer them over. This is my tweezers, how well they did with the noodles. Let's try my spoon. Well, I didn't get any there. Let's try it again. None again. Oh, let's keep trying. I wasn't able to get anything with my spoon. Now let's try the chopsticks. Wow, look at that. I'm gonna put that here next to the other one. When did I get more worms? When did I catch more worms? With a tweezer or with a chopstick? Obvious, definitely the chopstick. And the spoon, that was not good at all. I didn't get any. Let's move on to our seeds. Let's start off with the spoon. Well, I can get a whole lot of spoon this way, but am I able to crack them open? I can't. Let's try the chopsticks. I got one really nicely, but oops, when I try to crack it open, it doesn't work. Oh, didn't work again. Now let's try the tweezers. Well, I was able to get one with my tweezer, but am I able to crack it open? Oh, look at that, and look at the seed pop right out of the shell. I'll just show you guys the inside. Here's the seed. The tweezer was fabulous for picking up the most number of seeds and cracking them open. Now let's go on to our fish. Let's try the tweezers first. Are my tweezers able to grab fish? Not really. Let's try the chopsticks. See, can my chopsticks grab fish? Oh, sure can. Let's put that aside over here. I got one with my chopsticks. Now let's try the spoon. Whoa, got way more than one. I have three fish that I was able to get with my spoon. Now, let's review what we just did here. So again, it's not that worms, it's not that birds eat spaghetti or eat candy. 
The spaghetti models worms because it looks like it. And the candy fish kind of looks like fish. And we tried three different tools. We tried a tweezer, a chopstick, and a spoon because some of the birds' beaks really look like these tools. Now let's go over what we saw. Did the tweezer pick up worms? Sure did. Did the chopstick pick up worms? It really did. And it picked up a lot more than the tweezer did. Did the spoon pick up any worms? Nope, can't do it. And even if it does, it keeps falling right off. So the spoon is not a great beak, spoon-shaped beak. It's not great for picking up worms. Now what about my seeds? The chopstick picks them up, but when I try to crack it, it's not sharp enough. It needs a really, really sharp tooth. The spoon wasn't able to at all. It could pick up a whole lot. But if it can't crack them, there's no point. But the tweezer cracks them open. Let's try it again. There you go. Cracked it right open, releasing the seed. And then finally, the tweezers were not able to pick up the Swedish fish or the fish. Chopsticks are able to pick it up, but it was only able to pick up, whoops. Having a hard time now, there we go. It's able to pick up one, but the spoon, this was the winner, was able to pick up three of the Swedish fish. What this activity shows us is that Birds are adapted depending on where they live and what food is available to them. Their beaks are adapted for that type of food. If there's a bird that's living in an area where there are lots of seeds, it's going to adapt, and not over one year or two years, over a long period of time, it's going to adapt its beak to be able to pick up and crack those seeds, kind of like the tweezer. If a bird is living in an area where there are lots and lots of worms, well, it wants to be able to be efficient and pick up lots of worms, so it's going to have a beak like a chopstick. And if a bird is living in an area where there's lots of fish, well, its beak is gonna go look like a spoon, like a spoon bill, right? to be able to pick up lots of fish. Now there's one other type of bird that's right behind me. It's a hummingbird. What do you know about hummingbirds? What do they eat? Worms? No. Seeds? No. Certainly not fish. Hummingbirds drink the nectar from flowers. What are their beaks? look like? What do you think their beak would be modeled if we had a tool here? It would be a straw. Something that they could use to drink up the fluid. Now, go look at other tools in your house. Think about a fork. I think those are modeled from. All of our tools that we use are modeled from some type of an animal or something that we've seen in nature. We've modeled it. Think what other tools you've seen that you've copied animals or nature. Can't wait to see how you do on this experiment.